What's up, everyone? Jason Gilbo here, taking a look at pitching for tonight's 11-game slate. Uh, a lot to break down here. Got an insanely expensive Clayton Kershaw going tonight, uh, followed by guys like Chris Archer, Masahiro Tanaka, Madison Bumgarner. Uh, so overall, I mean, we got ourselves, you know, some decent pitchers, um, and, and GPPs and cash games are, are going to be interesting tonight just because the price tags create such a, um, a kind of a talking point for today's slate. So uh, jumping into the first game here, I got Dylan Covey versus Masahiro Tanaka. Uh, Tanaka, an interesting GPP guy tonight for me, um, mainly on DraftKings at 9K. Um FanDuel, I, I, you know, eight, 9K as well, or uh, sorry, 8,900. Um, you know, I'm, I'm okay with, with using him there as a single bullet, but it's mainly if you're building multiple lineups. Uh, just because you look at this this um, Chicago team, I mean, against right hand pitching, they, they've been awful this year, 25.2% strikeout rate, 28th in Woba. They just have a 25% hard contact rate as a team. Um, I, I know Tanaka has been up and down so far this year. I uh, haven't really seen the grade out of him, but uh, the strikeout upside really is there, minus 227. So definitely okay with him on both sides. Um, as far as the other side goes, Kobe, not a guy that I'm looking to use and looking to stack against. Uh, Red Sox and Blue Jays, Francisco Liriano versus Rick Porcello. Uh, Porcello is way too expensive for me to use on DraftKings, 8,800 on Fandle. Not looking to use him either here. I know Toronto's offense has been bad, but there are just far better pitchers to target right now with upside. Uh, Liriano, also not a guy that I'm looking to use tonight, um, just preferably because Boston is, uh, you know, not a high strikeout team, uh, decent walk rate. Uh, they have the second highest contact rate in the majors right now, so uh, it doesn't bode well for Liriano. Baltimore, Cincinnati, Yobaldo Jimenez versus Amir Garrett. Uh, Jimenez isn't the guy I want to use in this ballpark with his struggles against lefties and also holding runners on. Uh, Amir Garrett's interesting and, and more interesting on DraftKings. Um, we're looking at him at just 4,800, so, I mean, if you do want to play Kershaw, it's not it's not a great matchup. Um, it's not a bad one either. You look at Baltimore, I mean, against lefties, they, they have just been very boom or bust. 23.6% uh, strikeout rate to start the year. They do hit the ball hard. Um, they obviously do have some dangerous right-handed bats like, you know, Adam Jones, Mark Trumbo, Wellington Castillo, Manny Machado uh, does worry me a little bit. Uh, one thing I do like about Garrett this season is, you know, uh, you know, keeping the ball on the ground to a, a modest respect, 47%. Uh, 9.2 swinging strike rate, 19.6 strikeout rate. Isn't walking, guys, which is important. 4.4% walk rate this year. Modest hard contact allowed. Um, I can definitely see using him on DK as an SP2. Not really a fan dual play. Detroit and Tampa Bay, Chris Archer versus Jordan Zimmerman. Um, Jordan Zimmerman also cheap on DraftKings, 6,500. No thanks on FanDuel. <laughs> I don't think I can really get behind him right now. Um, I just don't like the way he's been pitching. I don't like the way he's been pitching for the last year or so. I know this is a great matchup against the Rays, who do strike out a ton, um, and he might have a decent outing, but I, I'm just not a guy that that's in a believer that Zimmerman's above-average pitcher right now. So um, I'd much rather use the opposite side of things with Chris Archer. Strikeout rate very high, 27%, misses a lot of bats. Um, if you can get the walk rate down and, and kind of avoid those big those big walk rate innings, uh, I'll definitely be okay with using him because you do look at this Tigers offense. 24% um, strikeout rate against righties. Uh, they have walked a lot, though, um, so that's one thing to note. They are hitting the ball hard. Uh, definitely some risk here, but I do think Archer is a solid GPP option on tonight's slate with the strikeout rate. Is a good home favorite there, minus 168. Detroit has one of the lower totals on the slate, 3.3. Um, so Archer, reasonable GPP option. Vince Velasquez, Robert Selman. Um, you look at Velasquez, not a guy that I'll be looking to use on tonight's slate. Um, you know, some strikeout upside certainly there, but it doesn't look right. Um, Mets have just too many lefties for me to really get after um, Velasquez here. Looking at Robert Selman on the other side, I mean, he did have some really strong starts against the Phillies last year. I'm certainly okay with using him as, a, as an SP2 on DraftKings. Um, you know, the price tag really isn't all that bad, 6,700. Uh, minus 131 favorite there at home. Um, Philly's offense certainly better than last year. I'll give them that. Um, you look at Selman, what he's kind of done here. Uh, 3.70 Sierra going back to last year. 23.4% strikeout rate, keeps the ball in the park. A high BAB of 333 over 50, his last 55 innings pitched since last year. So uh, that should come down a little bit more. 
um, is around the plate. So I, I definitely know why some I think he's playable in all formats as an SP2, um, but probably nothing more than that. Uh, Washington, Atlanta here, Joe Ross for Solia Tehran. Uh, neither of these arms I'm particularly thrilled with tonight. Uh, too many lefties in this land for both of them to really jump on board, especially with the other options. If there were different pitchers going tonight, maybe you could take a look at them, but uh, not tonight. Cleveland, Minnesota, uh, this one's easy because you wouldn't be taking these pitchers anyway. Also, heavy rain in the forecast. Uh, doubt this one even plays, uh, so no, no real need to talk about pitchers here. Angels in Houston, um, Dallas Keuchel's a little bit expensive for my taste. I do think he, he goes out and has a decent start. We've seen him have some quality outings here to start the year on DraftKings. Uh, his two highest, 24 and 28. Um, you look at this Angels team, they don't strike out a ton, um, which is not really good for GPP. So definitely a cash game guy if you want to go that route. Um, I'm not really looking to use him on, on either site, though, just because the price tag is, is fairly high. Uh, San Francisco, Kansas City, Jason Vargas versus Madison Bumgarner. Uh, Vargas is another guy where I think he's really just playable on DK at his price tag, 5300 uh, And then we kind of get to talk about Bumgarner here being a little bit differently priced than, than uh, you know, um, Clayton Kershaw tonight. So uh, you look at the Royals, I mean, you know, so far against lefties, dead last in Woba, 25% strikeout rate. Uh, 21% hard contact rate. I mean, just looking at the Royals lineup and, and what it – I mean, Alex Gordon, Eric Hosmer, two lefties. Bumgarner neutralizes lefties very well. Um, Lorenzo Cain, Salvador Perez, probably the only two right hands you have to really worry about. That's still not even that threatening. Uh, and then we get to guys Chesler, Cuthbert, Paulo Orlando, Alcides Escobar, Christian Colon, Drew Bortera. Um, I, I know Bumgarner's the guy we like to target more on the road, but, I mean, 28% strikeout rate going back to last year. Doesn't walk guys. Um you know, keeps the ball on the ground to a modest degree for being a lefty uh, and for being kind of a heavy strikeout guy. Um, Bunk I mean, it's really him and Kershaw's kind of the elite guys. So taking the discount and, and GPPs, I'm certainly okay with doing that and hoping for similar production because, you know, that money can come in handy. I mean, we're looking on Fandle 12 9 for Kershaw, 11 1 for for um, Bumgarner, and then we look at Kershaw, 13-8 on, on DK, 11-7 for Bumgarner. So I can definitely see the pivot made, and if you feel like you're not getting enough bats in there with Kershaw, um, I, I think Kershaw's going to have a terrific outing, but San Francisco's also in a good spot here um, as road favorites. Um, wind is blowing out a little bit. You might see a couple balls carry over, but I'm not, still not particularly worried. Uh, I think Bumgarner's really in play here. Uh, and Vargas as well. You look at this Giants offense, it's not particularly threatening um, against lefties. They're middle of the road. Uh, strikeout rate's been around about 21%. Um, so I think Vargas is a reasonable SP2 if you're just looking for a good quality start out of him. Colorado, Los Angeles next year, Tyler Anderson versus Clayton Kershaw. Uh, Anderson, I don't want any part of. I know the Dodgers have been bad against lefties, but uh, Anderson hasn't looked right to start this year. Uh, definitely not going to get a win here tonight. Uh, quality outing. Still, obviously, in question. Um, for me, it's, it's just an easy fade. Uh, as far as Kershaw goes here, back at home uh, against the Colorado team outside of Coors, Kershaw is simply one of the best pitchers, um, you know, sorry, the best pitcher in the league. Um, has, you know, stats to back it up across the board 14.6% swing strike rate. 1.9% walk rate. Um, you know, I, I doubt we see him give up a couple homers like we did in Coors uh, last time out. So certainly fire away with Kershaw. I'm okay with it. Feel like you can fit the bats in with them. Not going to knock you in all formats there. Arizona, San Diego, uh, Yulish Hassin, no thanks. Zach Greinke, I just, I, I still don't like what I'm seeing. I mean, this isn't a guy who goes particularly deep into games, um, you know, cracked the sixth inning against the, the Indians, but other than that, it's been around five. Um, I mean, you know, did have respectable numbers against the Padres on the road last year. Still wasn't anything to really get crazy about. Uh, I know this Padres team, obviously bad against righties. Um, strikeout rate's not as high as it was last year. Um, but, you know, it's, it's still not anything to really get excited about. Uh, you know, at FanDuel, I think he's still a little bit too expensive, 9700 DK, you can probably get away with it at 8700 I think he's playable in all formats, but uh, that's about it. I'm just not the biggest Grinky guy here. Never really have been. Uh, just a guy who lacks upside, but Padres matchup, Petco Park certainly helps him. Um, I, I do think 8700 is a fair price for him on drafting, so I'm okay with using him there, but uh, that's about it. So that's going to wrap things up here. You can head on over to dailyfantasycafe.com, check out our great tools and content.